you are watching Redicon. We are still discussing B or vertebral bodies of spine MRI. After discussing developmental anomalies, hemangiomas, fractures, metastasis, the next topic is corners of the vertebral bodies. Let's call them phytes, which includes osteophytes, syndesmophytes, parasyndesmophytes. We will briefly discuss how syndesmophytes are linked to sacroiliitis in ankylosing spondylitis. Let's look at these two images. Both of these show abnormal corners of the vertebral bodies. There are bony overgrowths at the corners, however, these represent two distinct patterns of this abnormality. On the left, these are osteophytes, while on the right, these are syndesmophytes. Osteophytes on the left are degenerative in origin, while syndesmophytes on the right are inflammatory in origin. Osteophytes on the left are horizontal at their start, however, they will turn upwards and cause bridging osteophytes. Syndesmophytes, on the other hand, are vertical as they are in line with the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments representing calcified anthesis. Let's look at them closely. Osteophytes are irregular and fat, while syndesmophytes are regular, sharp, and vertically oriented. Because syndesmophytes are inflammatory in origin, these cause subligamentous spread beneath the anterior spinal ligament, causing inflammation and subsequent calcification, resulting in squaring of the vertebral body, a phenomena which is not seen in osteophyte formation. The image on the right represents ankylosing spondylitis, which we all know represents anthesis, inflammation, which can also affect the capsule of sacroiliac joints, resulting in subchondral sclerosis of anterior posterior synovial part of both SI joints, typically resulting in ankylosis later on. Inflammation of the connective tissue, such as collagen, resulting in calcification and ultimately ankylosis, is a common feature between ankylosing spondylitis as well as sacroiliitis. Hence, these are often associated. We are still on B or bodies. Let's look at these two images taken from Radiology Journal. T1 and T2 weighted images show modic type 1 inflammatory and plate changes at L3-4 intervertebral space. Modic type 1 changes appear as hypointense areas on A on the left which is T1 and hyperintense areas on the B, which is on the right side, T2 weighted images. A simple rule to this is that if it's bright on one sequence, it's a type 1 change. It would be bright on T2 always as it represents the edema. Let's look at this case. T1 images on the left and T2 weighted images on the right both show hyperintense or bright end plates, which is modic 2. Or modic type 2 changes. As discussed in the last slide, if it's bright on 1, it is type 1 change. If it's bright on 2, then it's a type 2 change representing fatty replacement prior to inflammation which was seen in the type 1 changes. In type 3 changes, end plates would appear dark and hypointense as these represent sclerosis after initial phase of inflammation, then fatty replacement, and final stage of sclerosis. And that concludes our discussion on alignment, A, as well as B, body height. This video is presented in collaboration with Radicon Institute of Radiology. You are welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for updates. For more modules in radiology CMEs, please visit our website www.radicon.org.